All right, and uh, here we are. This is the final shot. The final two yeah. frames. Um, well, not the final two frames of the tribute because there's the, the title, but the final two <laughs> frames um, uh, that have CGI elements in them, basically. And uh, I think we, when we were doing this, we, 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 never, we didn't have a cut where we had this and then, Mike, you put it in here. And I was like, mm -hmm. ah, man, we can't do that. <laughs> Don't put that in there. <laughs> and then I was like, when we um, were getting further along, when we cut that part out, I was like, man, it, we really need to bring that back. I think we're going to have to put him in there. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, man, I, I think I could sculpt it, but I, I hadn't used ZBrush for a while, and I was really worried about how much time it was going to take me. So mm -hmm. uh, I reached out to my friend Raf, Rafael Grissetti, who's this incredible ZBrush artist. And I've worked with him on many of my projects. He's been amazing. He he's just a, it's really awesome. And so, he lended a hand, and and he was I I showed him the the teaser as it was, and he was like, fuck yeah. And so he <laughs> he really wanted to be a part of it, and he was just kind enough. He's a very busy guy and a, and a great family man, so he's always busy with his family. So, yeah, he was kind enough to join along, and and so he he sculpted out um, uh, with his amazing skills. He managed to sculpt out this uh, amazing sculpt that you see here um mm -hmm. which we then brought in and, and textured and lit and, and rendered and and yeah it's i mean it's it really completes the piece i think i think yes. it really finishes it on a on a high note a very strong note um personally i feel like it's i can't imagine it without it now um mm -hmm. yeah it's it's it really um completes the piece completely i think so um so maybe I can talk a little bit about some of the textures. This is the last shot we did. So this is <laughs> this is a culmination of how good we've gotten, hopefully, over the over the course. And and you know we talk. I mean, I I was giving Mike some crap about his 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 stuff, but like look how nasty <laughs> my files can be too. So <laughs> let's see. I think this is from the old file too, so it's all messy. Um, that's one thing that's kind of a problem is the node editor won't update sometimes and you get old mm -hmm. textures in there. But, um, I, I, uh, had Raph make a quick skin, t uh, test or skin texture off of, um, when he was building it inside of ZBrush and I would take that as the base and then I would go in and, um, there's a, there's a couple really cool things. If you go into the materials and then open live database, there's a couple really good skin resources that you have in here that I only oh, discovered nice. later on. I don't know if you know about this. Uh, I never used this before. <laughs> there you go. I'm schooling you in real time. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, and inside here, you have a couple different really good subsurface skin uh, materials. And um, one that I would use a lot was this Daz skin material. Because I used, I would use a Daz quite a bit for doing pre concepts and stuff like that. But they they mm -hmm. have a Tony's sculpture sh shader, and there's a couple Tony sc Tony sculpture. There's this guy that makes these um, subsurface materials that you can then kind of work with, which are really great. And so I can't remember which one I started from, but I ended up grabbing one of these, and then basically putting it onto the model, and then replacing certain parts until I can get it to where I want it to be. And the only way you're able to get like good skin is by creating solid subsurface. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, light that floats through the ear and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. transparencies and stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of, kind of how it worked. And, um, if we look back at kind of the gener the, how it started. So, <laughs> and Raph would send me over some details, some, <laughs> some updates and stuff and, um, this is, I, I can't remember. I don't know if he was doing it. I think he was in ZBrush or something, but, um, but yeah, here's a example of, as I was testing samples, uh, uh testing, um, the various, uh, materials and trying to get a good look for it, um, started getting here and I felt like I lit him as I would in model in real life. So I would alter the right and left side to get a contrast. So it wasn't perfectly mm -hmm. symmetrical. Mm -hmm. um, added some volume and then as we were going through it I kept trying to figure out a way of creating eye light because his eyes need to have, needed to have because yeah. it just looks totally void so once I figured out how to add the eye light I was like okay great and then the volume would mess it up so I couldn't get the volume to work and so it was like this back and forth issue and then sometimes <laughs> I turn him to bald and and then this is what it looks like when he's uh, when you're looking at it through like 
um, where the noise is, is rendering and stuff too. And then adding some moisture to the eyes and really trying to playing with it basically. But it's kind of cool. Like looking back at this because of the evolution, I think if we were to see these at the beginning of us making this project, it would probably be pretty cool, you know? So it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of fun to document it and see where it's all gone. This looks kind of interesting though. Um, this is a screenshot of what it looks like from the samples, the no the noise of the samples. It's getting pretty close. This is some <laughs> a hairdo I was considering doing. So <laughs> Raph made the hair really quickly, so he just only made the front part, which is all we needed anyway. So um, yeah, here it is. And um, I can't remember how I got that eye light in here though. I think I ended up adding a plane of, for bounce light. I think with lighting is it's, it's again it's one of my favorite things it's also one of the things that's sometimes the hardest thing to do and i usually like to start off with very simple light setups nothing too crazy and i think what i did it ended up doing is i created a piece of geometry that i was able to bounce light off of that then captured a glint in his eyes mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. i think it really it helped out the shot a lot which made it a lot easier to kind of capture that mood and tone and, and there it is it's getting closer and blowing it out and seeing how it looks and then once we were there we kind of just rendered it out basically so yeah got closer and and there we are yeah and then if it's in here there it is and then adding slight just it's only two frames <laughs> so you can't get <laughs> much of any animation in it but yeah the end piece i really was for me, it was important to have him really glowing and radiating energy and stuff. So, yeah, there it is. There's that dude. <laughs> yeah. Man, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> this is a. This has been a long journey. It's been a long journey just making these long journey videos. So yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. But yeah, man. As a as a recap, is there anything else that we might have missed or things that we should maybe um just me maybe possibly mention um mm -hmm. and maybe we could uh show people some of the shots we didn't we, we didn't put in in the uh final video oh man there's so many of those things <laughs> yeah i don't even know where to start and i don't even know where to find those honestly oh uh, yeah here's like a i mean Again, this is like where I throw all the stuff from screenshots of prog progress of the of the film and the different pieces and stuff. So, I mean, we, we even went off and made this shot. We ended up not using it. Um, there was so many, there was so many, like that's, this is a rough render of that shot early on. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Um, I mean, there there is, there is a lot. Here's, um, here's, uh, a quick piece a quick render of Tetsuo um, on the tank we ended up not using that um, yeah there's so much we ended up we were yeah. gonna do this one the crater and we actually yeah. got pretty far along and then decided yeah let's not do it so <laughs> <laughs> yeah we got pretty close I mean, we had all these buildings and figured out a way to scatter them and made the bridge and everything too and decided not to do that and this is really interesting doing this one too. There was like a weird, I forget how, because I wanted to paint a way to have just mm -hmm. the buildings on a certain spot. Mm -hmm. so I sculpted the crater in there and I forgot how we did that, honestly. It's all blur. Here's the sculpt of it and yeah, how it looks. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. And, oh yeah, and there's a part bike. of Kaneda's bike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, damn it. Should have used it, but yeah, it just didn't fit in there. Here's photos of my toy kind of a bike that I have, and then me in Fusion 360 <laughs> trying to figure out how to model it, which was uh, very challenging, but mm -hmm. yeah, almost got there. Here's some of the ZBrush sculpts on the damaging parts of that one shot right here when we started mm -hmm. to really develop it. But I think, I don't know what happened. I just think we gave up on it. <laughs> I think we couldn't mm -hmm. nail the lighting or something. <laughs> we probably could have figured it out, but I think we just were like, eh, whatever. Yeah, and here's the shot for shot. So, yeah, getting it, closer. It's quite, quite close. Quite close, yeah. Pretty simple. It's pretty, pretty close. Here's an earlier take on the that one other shot. 
uh, the tomb, basically. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah, we should finish this eventually, just mm -hmm. because it would be good to finish it. But yeah, this epic swing shot. Yeah. <laughs> <So nice. laughs> oh, we had the um, Kaneda's uh, bike too, and the dials. Mm -hmm. We were gonna have the bike sh racing through the street. Um, yeah, decided not to do that for obvious reasons. Um, here's some textures on some computers that we had falling. We had a shot where the computers were falling. We decided not to do that either. Cut that out. Um, there are so many fluid shots, but we decided to cut those, those things out too. Mm -hmm. Here's some assets from that one building shot. We went mm -hmm. pretty, pretty far on these ones, this one. And then obviously the computer one we talked about earlier too. Mm -hmm. Um, cut that out too. And there's just so much. I really like this seat shot too. That was one of the earlier first mm -hmm. shots too, because it was so similar. It was like, damn, it was crazy. Sure. Um, the moon. Yeah, that was the moon. We were going to have the moon like being ripped apart and creating its own thing. Here was all the computers falling. Oh man, we did it so much. We did. <laughs> there's a rock falling. <laughs> There was a, we did all the, um, the, the, the kids like the playground too, all those things too. So, but man, um, yeah, that's kind of a nutshell. I mean, there's, there's more, but I mean, this is just on random, but yeah, also like the throne too. But, but anyways, I mean, yeah, it was, it's been an amazing journey and, mm -hmm. um, it's been great establishing a great creative friendship with you, Mike. It's been awesome. And guys. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yes, it's my honor. <laughs> yeah, total honor for me as well, man. It's been great. It's been a really great journey, and um, yeah, I just I I don't know. I want to take a moment to thank Otomo for mm -hmm. making this, and uh, and all the the amazing people that were behind making this a possibility um, to inspire us. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's been it's been a great journey, and and I'm hoping that for me personally, I hope that you guys are inspired by this and go watch mm -hmm. the original film and read the original ma manga and buy it and, and celebrate it and enjoy it and, and share it with people that you love. And yeah, cause it's awesome. And it's such a special mm -hmm. piece of, uh, of art. And yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my closing thoughts. You got anything you want to say to everybody? Yeah. Um, yeah. At first I'm very happy to be this community because, uh, People just uh, doing things that they love and uh, and uh, creating things, uh, sharing to each other, like 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 this piece we did is like we just uh, put put our love to to our work and uh, share to other people so that the community community can get get is like getting people more motivated to do their their personal stuff. I think it's very important. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think it's really important. I think it's so important to be able to express yourself and also whatever way you feel, you know, like that, that resonates to you, you know? So for, mm -hmm. for us, yes. it was, was using Akira and then, and then who knows what it is for you, you know? So yeah, we hope that, uh, this has inspired you. And we also hope that Otomo sees it some way. That'd be amazing. So if you mm -hmm. know Otomo and get this in front of him. So <laughs> tell him, thank you for us. We appreciate it. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully he likes it. Hopefully he doesn't hate it. So yeah. But, um, yeah. Thank you to everybody that's helped us out yeah. on this and friends and thank family. You. And yeah, it's been a crazy year, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Super thankful, man. Super thankful. It's been a great yes. journey. <laughs> Awesome. Well, um, this is Ash and Mike, and we're signing off. Yeah, and, it's uh, enough. Yeah, we'll see you guys uh, on the next tribute in a couple yes. years. <laughs> <laughs> see you guys. Yeah, cheers, everyone. <laughs>